Hey everybody, Coach Toolshed here, and before we get into today's topic, we're here at the end of 2019, and I just wanted to take a quick minute and thank everybody who has subscribed to the channel over the last year and a half since I started doing these opinion-based videos, the more editorialized, and some review-type videos that I've been doing here over the last year and a half. I just want to give a quick shout-out to all of you. Thank you for your support, and hopefully going into 2020, we'll have an even better year going forward. I know 2019 has been a little bit of a rough year here on YouTube for smaller content creators. Hopefully things have been ironed out. Things need to be on a bit of an uptick more lately, but we'll see how it goes. But anyway, thank you for, very much for your support and let's just dive into today's topic. And what I want to do today is take a look back at a video I did, the first video I did of 2019. The topic was the top five things that I was going to stop buying in 2019. I want to take a look back and see how that went for me, whether or not I regret some of these decisions that I made, and whether or not I'm going to keep some of these rules moving forward. And rest assured, I do have another video in the works for things that I'm going to stop buying in 2020. But right now, let's take a look back, see some of the things that I decided to stop buying this year, and whether or not it was a good decision. First, we're going to start out with one of the heavy hitters. I decided this year to entirely boycott Electronic Arts. I was not going to buy any of their products, and I decided that until they change their business strategies in a major way, I am just done buying their products. Now, at the end of the year, they did release a single-player game that didn't have the loot box transactions that we have such a problem with in the industry these days, especially coming from EA. However... Does that offset the fact that EA also gave us one of the most meme-worthy phrases of the year? In fact, it probably is the top of the list when we got the phrase from them, Surprise Mechanics, the new name that they like to give loot boxes because, you see, they don't like to use the term loot boxes anymore. It's a dirty term. They're surprise mechanics. So I have to weigh one against the other. And really, at the end of the day, Electronic Arts, you're going to have to do better for me than just releasing one single player game that doesn't have all these greedy microtransactions and loot box mechanics because until they change their business strategy i'm still having them on the naughty list for next year as well and i did not buy any electronic arts game this year at all and i do not regret that in any way shape or form i might have missed out on a star wars game that people are saying is pretty good but at the end of the day, it's not enough to sway me. No, Electronic Arts, you will not get my money again in 2020 simply because you have shown that you fundamentally have not changed your mindset. And as a result, 2020 is going to be another year where EA is not going to get any of my money. Now let's move on to the next topic. Another thing I decided to stop doing this year, which is something I've been kind of leaning more towards over the last couple of years anyway, because I think it's kind of pointless, but I decided not to get any pre-orders of any kind for any games this year. Was I able to stick to that? Well, I will admit there was one game that I pre-ordered right before midnight the day before it came out, and that is Frostpunk, which came out on consoles earlier this year. That is a game that had great reviews on PC. It's a game I was very much interested in, and right before I decided to go to bed that night, I decided, you know what? I'm going to pre-order this game, even though it's coming out in just a matter of hours. And that is the only time that I pre-ordered the game. And I actually didn't regret it, but I just wanted to point that out that I did actually slip a little bit. I pre-ordered a game two hours early. I didn't regret it because I did end up loving the game. I did a review on that game. It's one of my favorite games I played this year. It's actually a 2018 game, but again, came out on consoles this year and I had a great time playing it. But regardless, got to come clean. I did pre-order one game. But moving forward again into 2020, that is still where I stand. I will not be pre-ordering any games whatsoever, and I'll try not to make any exceptions at all. Moving on. The number three thing that I decided not to buy this year was I was not going to order ahead of time and buy into any season passes or expanded editions of games when they first came out. I was going to wait until we had the entire season pass before I would even evaluate what was going on and i'm happy to say there is not a single instance that i can point to this year where i actually put down money for a season pass before the season pass actually came out in fact the only expansion content that i touched the entire year was when civilization 6 came out i went ahead and after playing the game for about 50 hours i decided you know what what the heck 
these season passes, this expansion content has been out for quite a while already on PC. It's got good reviews. People, in fact, say it's a good part of the game. And although it did cost way too much money, 2K, 2K, don't think you're not getting eyed up for my naughty list for 2020. But anyway, even though the expansion cost way too much money, Civilization has been one of my favorite series going back for a couple of decades now, and I've put thousands of hours into the franchise, and I've already put between 50 to 100 hours into this game in the expansion since I first got it. So I don't really regret spending the money because I know that I will get my money's worth out of this game, although, again, way too expensive, although I am happy to say I didn't put it down any money ahead of time on any games this year for any ridiculous season passes or any you know deluxe editions and i do not regret that in any way shape or form as we know most of the time all you're going to get is some extra skins for your guns or a, a new skin for your car or alternate character outfits i mean who really cares at the end of the day i'm not going to spend extra money for that and going into next year again not going to even look or think about any season pass content of any kind until it's been fully released we saw an example earlier this year of metro exodus that i discussed here on the channel where they were trying to sell content even though they write out flat out said ahead of time while they were trying to sell the dlc season passes that they had no idea what it was actually going to entail but it was going to be great okay i'm i'm sorry i'm, I'm not buying into any assurances of that kind and i do not regret not buying any of those season passes this year there's nothing at all from any of the games that i played where i'm like oh man i didn't get any of that expansion content because quite honestly most of the games that i played this year that were single player in nature some of them did have expansion content and it was free and i think maybe some of the tides are turning in that regard as well because i think over the years, if you look at the completion percentages for stuff like DLC and expansion pass stuff, most people don't actually go back and touch any of that content. Some people buy it, but no one actually plays it. And I think over time, companies are just realizing that it's really not worth the money. And I know as for myself, I've already concluded that it's not worth the money for me to spend on these season passes either. And I know many of you feel the same way. Now let's move on to the next one. Number four, this was a big one for me to make this decision last year to simply cut Bethesda Game Studios and Bethesda Softworks out of my purchasing options for the entire year. And I wanted to put them on one year probation and see if they redeemed themselves in 2019 to see if going forward in 2020, I would be willing to spend any money on their products headed forward. And I am sad to say, although not surprised, if you've seen any of my videos from last year about the downfall of Bethesda, I am sad to say they did nothing in 2019 that has given me any hope whatsoever that they are going to turn things around or that I should spend any of my money on their games in 2020. Let's look at their output from this year when you start with Fallout 76. And yes, this is footage from today. Watch as the game world loads in this is footage i just captured hours ago this is their current build you see the game still <laughs> taking all this time to load in assets even though i've been playing all this time it's taking all this time to just the, as you can see over a year later the game is still just running aces but anyway aside from the debacle that continues to be fallout 76 and all the issues going on with that game Bethesda Softworks on the publishing end also didn't inspire too much confidence in me with Rage 2 and Wolfenstein Youngblood. Now, Rage 2 looks like it could have been a little bit fun, but didn't really have much going on, so I don't really regret not playing that game, and it is actually available on Game Pass right now if I really was dying to go play Rage 2 and not have to put out any money directly to Bethesda for it. I could go do that. I still haven't because I really don't have much interest or time to play Rage 2 right now. And Wolfenstein Youngblood, honestly, I am so glad that I didn't even have to have the option to think about buying that game because just watching some of the cutscenes from that game surely has to be one of the worst games of the entire year. Even though I didn't play it, like I said, because I didn't touch any Bethesda games this year, I just... Wow, that game looked awful. And the reviews were not very good and the user reviews were even worse. I don't I don't think anyone who was talking about the game for anything other than certain reasons really enjoyed Wolfenstein Youngblood because I 
there was just nothing about the game that looked enjoyable in any way, shape, or form. It looked like an absolute disaster of a game. I am glad that I didn't play it. And as a result, going into 2020, after, and this really does hinge mostly on Fallout 76 because that is just the dismantling and a disgraceful showing for Fallout, which is one of the biggest IPs in all of gaming, for Bethesda to handle things and continue to just run this game into the gutter and with the with the subscription fee that they've added and going back on their promises and just admitting that they lied outright to us as the public earlier when they were trying to market the game with the whole atomic shop just backpedaling on everything and it's just it's still a mess of a game there's been no substantial content updates the entire year and it's just a disaster the public relations has been a disaster for the entire game. The way they've handled it, Pete Hines has gone completely into hiding this year. He is still only pops his head up once in a while like a woodchuck out in the field like, is, can I come out now? No, Pete, you can't come out now, I guess. You're still not allowed to talk. But anyway, let's move on to the final thing. Something which I was also able to stick to my pledge on this one, which was to not buy any microtransactions of any kind in any game for the entire year. And I was able to do that except for one caveat. Some of you may remember earlier in the year when Rockstar launched the Diamond Casino into Grand Theft Auto Online, there was a bit of a controversy brewing about whether or not you could actually spend real money on the game. And I was seeing a lot of false information going back and forth. People saying, yes, you could. And people saying, no, you couldn't. As we know now, it was based on which region of the world you lived in, whether or not you could spend real money on the game. But at the time, we didn't know that there was a lot of confusion. So I did, I made a video about this. I did go in and buy the cheapest shark card for Grand Theft Auto Online, just so I could try myself to see if you actually could spend real money on this online casino that we know kids play all the time. And yes, in fact, here in America, you can buy and spend real money at this fake casino where there is no actual payout. It's worse than an actual casino. I did a video about this when it, at the time when it came out, but that is the only time that I got any microtransactions of any kind for the entire year and I'm glad that I stuck to that and I feel like this was just one caveat which I had to do in order to confirm and get the word out that yes in fact Rockstar was running an actual for money casino in their already highest grossing game that's ever been made so I think that speaks for itself anyway like I said I'm going to be doing a video probably coming out Later on this week, or maybe next week, the top five things that I'm not going to be buying in 2020. And looking back on the stuff that I avoided buying, the potentially hundreds of dollars that I didn't waste buying all of this nonsense from these AAA companies, I am happy to say that for the most part, I would say this year was successful in keeping to my pledges. And we'll see what happens going into next year. I'm going to stick by everything I said for 2019 is also going to apply to 2020 and 2020 i'm adding some new stuff to the list now one more thing that i want to discuss real quickly as we head into the last couple days of this year and really in the next several weeks and maybe even the first two months depending on which games you're interested in there's not really much coming out in the way of big releases until about march or april like i said depending on what games you're interested in I don't really have anything circled on my calendar until the middle of February, and that's only one game, and then it's going to be really the middle of March before I really start sinking my teeth into any of these bigger games. So I want to put out some reviews for some 2019 games that sort of slipped under the radar, maybe didn't get a whole ton of attention. Some of this stuff got plenty of attention, I, I will say, but some of the stuff sort of slipped under the radar. And I want to put out a couple of reviews. Maybe there are some hidden gems that you might find enjoyable for the next few months in January and February as we're waiting for some of the bigger releases to come out. So I want to sort of crank out a few reviews in the next week or so, and hopefully you guys will tune in for some of those. Anyway, that's it for me, Coach Toolshed. Let me know what you guys think down in the comments below. What did you spend your money on in 2019, or what did you avoid spending, and what are you going to be doing in 2020 to avoid wasting your money on some of these nonsense monetization practices? Let me know what you guys think down in the comments below. Please subscribe if you want to stay in tune with the channel. Head forward, and as always, 
Keep it turned to 11.